Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be making this uh, clean motion graphic effect inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Now, if you guys want this effect, but do not want to make it yourself, there's a link in the description below where you can do just that. So over in Fusion, I'm going to right click and do new Fusion composition. And I'm just going to call this motion graphic 2. Alright, and I'm doing 5 seconds long and 24 frames per second. Uh, you guys can change this so that it fits your project. All right now that that's done, I'm just going to save and then head over to that. Okay, so something I like to do, just to keep the project neat, right click and do arrange tools to grid. Um, so that way it snaps, snaps into position and doesn't do just the free free form. Um, it's nice and organized. So first up, I'm going to make my background. So I'm just going to drag down a background node, connect it up to my media out, and give this like a nice little red here. And there we go. Uh, next, we're going to make the circle that our text fits in. So I'll just drag down a circle here, or an ellipse, uh, connect that into a background node, set the background color to white, and then merge that up onto the background. Then in the ellipse, I will uncheck solid and give it a little bit of a width. We'll adjust that more later. So I'm just going to leave it at, at its default size for now. On the height, right click and do expression and connect, connect that to the width. That means all you have to do is adjust, adjust the width slider and it will uh, keep it as a circle. So that's just easier for animating later on if you guys want to do that. Next, what we're going to do is jump to like the 12th frame just a little bit forward um, and we're gonna put a keyframe on the length and position okay then go back to the first frame bring down the length a little bit then you can adjust the position just to move it around and then bring down the length the rest of the way so now if you watch this it makes a nice draw action um, I'm gonna go into the spline editor here and if I drag my ellipse over I can see the animations I'm just gonna select those hit F on my keyboard then hit T um, and bring these values to 50. So now I feel like that's a nice smooth animation. So now we're going to move on to the text. Alright, and now for the text, we'll just drag down a text plus node, and we're going to connect that up after the ellipse. Okay, um, I'm actually going to change my background color here just to something a little more vibrant. So now we're going to put in our text, so I'm going to do DaVinci, DaVinci Resolve Tutorials. All right, and I'm going to change this to a bold italic font. I'm going to up the size just a little bit. Then I'm going to go down a little more. I'm going to add some spacing and then also add line spacing, just like that. Okay, now if I go over into the transform tab and go to shear, I'm just going to make it a little more italicized. Okay, now that we're done with that, we'll go back in the text, right click in the text editor and hit follower. Now if we go over to the modifiers tab, we're going to go to the styles and go all the way down to position. We're going to add a keyframe on the X and Y and then we'll jump forward a few frames and then add another one. Then we can go back and move this so that it's outside of the circle. So I don't know why this is, but I've been having this error for a long time on where a few of the letters at the end will stay and not be affected by the follower at all. So how you fix this is you go back to the tools and add like two spaces in front of the tutorials and two spaces after. So it keeps it centered on the screen, but it adds two extra spaces at the end so that, that those are the ones that are not affected, but you can't see that. So that's just a little tip on how to fix that. Now if we watch this, as you can see, it comes in pretty fast and that's what we want. Now we're going to head over to the... Uh, now we're going to go up to the timing tab and add just a little bit of delay, okay? And then change the order from right to left. As you can see, that jumps in. Now if we drag the text over into the spline editor, we're going to grab the last point, hit F, and then adjust the easy ease in to 100. And now that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to want to do is make this circle act as a mask. So we're going to add, copy our ellipse here and paste it. And if we go into ellipse 1 and hit the pin icon, 
and then we go to the ellipse two or ellipse one underscore one. Uh, on the width, we'll right click and do expression and then connect and then connect that to ellipse one. So now if we go down to the ellipse one width, it'll adjust the width up here as well. Now we can just unpin that and click anywhere on any other node and it will remove those. So now we'll just attach this ellipse to the merge one. Uh, hit solid, remove the border width. And now if we watch this, you can see it comes in nice. If you guys want, you can go into the text and go to the settings and add motion blur. You'd want to up the quality to probably about 15, 20. And as you can see, that'll give you a nice motion blur effect. For the purpose of this, I'm not going to be using motion blur, but I'm just letting you know that that is an option. All right, so now that, that animation is done, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the background um, and merge it up with the back of Merge 2 here. And since the background is coming in as the foreground, which is the green, we're gonna click on the Merge 2 and do Control T to swap the foreground and background, okay? And now we'll, we'll drag down another background node, connect that into the Merge 1 and make that transparent. So if you look at the Merge 2, um, it's just a transparent grid, and then it's merging on top of the background. Then what we'll do is select all those and do Control G to make a group, then hit F2 and name it Text and Circle. This will just help. This will just help stay a little bit neater, um, and make the node setup look better in the end. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we're gonna transform at the end of that. Once the animation is completed, we're going. We'll just go to the last frame there, add a keyframe on the size, go forward a few frames, and bring it down. Now this step is optional, it's just kind of how I wanted to do it. You don't have to animate it if you just want it to stay be small right away in the beginning. Then select the keyframes, press F, and then again, just adjust the values to about 50. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and make the crosshair. So how you're gonna wanna do that is drag down a background node, go over to the image, tab, uncheck auto resolution, on the width set that to 100, and the height also set that to 100. So now we have a background that is 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall, and if we bring down a rectangle, plug it into that, you can also adjust the background color to be white. Uh, we'll set the width to 1, and then bring down the height to a decent, decent length. Then you'll want to go into the rectangle one and go into the angle and set 90 degrees. Okay, so now we have a perfect cross here and we'll just drag this up for now. So we'll drag down a transform and then I was doing it about frame eight um, on the background. We'll set the end at eight and then the end at about 18. So make it 10 frames long. So that's as long as this thing will appear for. Okay, then on the transform, if we go into here, uh, we'll just go to the first frame, add a keyframe on the angle, go to the last one, and do three, th 330 degrees. So now if you watch this, it's rotating at a nice speed. We can plug it into the uh, main comp to see it. It's small there, but you can see it. Something that I did forget to mention is that the outer circle, you want to make that about the width of your font. It'll make it look a lot cleaner and more professional. Okay, so now that that's done, what we'll want to do, I'm just going to move this over a little bit, dr drag down a background node, set that to transparent, and merge this up, making sure it is as the background instead of the foreground. You can do this again by hitting Control T on your keyboard. Now we're going to click on the Merge, Shift Space, and do Duplicate. Adjust the copies to about 10. Then under Jitter, we're going to up the X position and the Y position as well. You can play around with the controls on the duplicate node as well to get what you want. Now if we add a little bit of a time offset, that'll make them so that they blink on. Now just because I don't like this one being right here, um, we're going to bring down the transform and bring the output and have it be a mask on the merge. And then if we go into the merge and do apply mask inverted. So now you can see all of the other points except for that little one right down there. And if you look, you can kind of see it. So we can just adjust the channel, uh, bring down the high. There we go.
So now you should be able to see all of the other crosshairs except for the one in the middle. I think that just makes it look a little bit cleaner. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna grab this to Control G um, and F2 and name this crosshairs. And there we go. We'll just drag this all the way over by the text and circle. So now what we're gonna do is make the little lines that are drawing all over the um, canvas. So I'll bring down a background, set that to white, and we'll add a mask paint effect. And that should come in as a mask on the background. We can merge this up so we can see it. And in the mask, up in the top here, we'll want to hit polygon stroke, and then the brush controls, bring the softness down, and then create your first point. Keep in mind, if there's gonna be any curves, make sure they're nice and smooth. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna click a little ways from the edge here, and then when I do this, I'm gonna draw this line kind of big here, okay? This will make it so that it's a little bit smoother in the final animation. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna get our size right. So bring that down so it's about the length of, so adjust that so it's about the length of the circle. We can add like a little bit of softness just to make it blend. And I'm gonna copy the size value for the next ones just to make it easier. So now in the mask pane, if we go down to the stroke controls, we're gonna go to the first frame that we want it to start drawing, which is for me is when it starts to get smaller. And if we bring the right on and trim it, as you can see it's moving, We'll trim it so that's uh, off the screen and the size we want. Then we'll add a keyframe, jump forward a little bit, and then move all of these to the other side. So now if we watch this, got a little animation coming across the screen. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing by bringing down a background, making it white, adding a mask paint node, and now in the mask paint node, we'll put in our size, we'll go back to the other one, copy the softness, and put that in as well. Make sure the background's white, then you can go ahead and copy that so that you don't have to redo all those steps every time. Now we'll just keep merging these up, and I'm just gonna keep going through and doing these animations. All right, so I've completed my animation. If you guys wanna go ahead and add more graphics, uh, you guys can go right ahead and do that. Just keep repeating the same process. Uh, but just to fi finish this off, I'm going to grab these, do Control G, and rename this Lines, okay? All right, so now to finish up this animation, we're gonna add a little wipe across at the end. So how we're gonna do that is drag down a second background, make that transparent and merge it up with the last merge in our composition. Once again, we have to switch that. And now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna bring this down to make it look a little nicer. We're gonna bring down a rectangle, connect this up, and now what we're gonna do is up the width. We're gonna bring this a lot more. Uh, set the angle, I'm gonna do negative 45, um, and then bring the height up so that it extends across the entire screen. So now we'll go to the end when we want it to animate out, add a keyframe on the center X and Y, then go a few frames after and drag this down. And how to line this up is the line that it draws between the keyframes, make sure that is in the corner of the screen, like you can see. So now as you can see that wipes that away, we're gonna go into the spline and going to e add add some smoothness to that. So now if we watch this, it comes out nice and then speeds up towards the end. All right, so here's our final animation. I'm pretty pleased how this turned out. Gotten a little better at it than the first one that I made. So I will make a file for this so you guys can download this uh, and I'll put a link in the description below. So how that's gonna work is it's going to be all of these nodes exactly how you see them. Um, all you'll have to do is just drag a dot setting file in and they will all appear right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. If you guys have something specific that you guys want to learn in DaVinci Resolve, please comment it down below and I will try to make that tutorial for you. See you guys next time for another video.